As quilters, we all have our favorite quilt patterns, our go-to for a fast finish, but what about something playful and different and maybe a little bit scrappy? And on a rag quilt? Have you done that before? I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and I want to show you this rag quilt that uses scrap fabrics to accent and enhance particular colors in the quilt. It's really a lot of fun. But first, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Let's get started. Here's an up-close peek of what I'm talking about. My granddaughter loves pink quilts, and she loves purple, but I didn't have the purple fabric that I wanted to use in the quilt. But look at what I was able to do. I used my scraps. I had some fat quarters and some purple strips, and I incorporated that into my layering. And look at what I got. I love it. And I also worked it into this wonderful ruffle border. This is great fun. I can't wait to show you how to make these blocks. This is a really fun rag quilt. What I'm going to do is colorize the frayed edges. I want to choose specific colors that I want to be within the frayed edge in order to accent the entire quilt. So what I have here is my top fabric. Um, everything is flannel except this I could only find in cotton. Last year I was able to find it in uh, flannel, but I really love the print and it's perfect for a little little sweetheart quilt, you know, somebody who loves the pinks and the purples. And so this is going to be my top. The blocks are going to alternate. And so we'll have those two. And then on the back, these are going to be my two prints. So where this is on the front, this will be on the back. And where this one is on the back, this one will be on the front. So I think that's going to work out really well. And then I'm using just a basic pink in the middle. Now, there's a lot of white in here, so you could easily go for white. But I got a really good deal on some pink flannel and chose to go with that. I am cutting everything at 10 inches. I'm going to use 10 inch squares and I am going to sew the X on this. This is another one. This is for my granddaughter and so it's going to have a lot of heavy use and I'm going to sew the X's. It just reinforces everything and keeps the layers of fabric together. But there's one other thing that I'm going to do and I want to show that to you here. I have cut out one purple square for each square of the quilt and I'm going to insert this in the layers of the flannel in between them in order to get this purple rag around each of the frayed edges. Now granted some of these are mixed. Everything's a batik but they go from purple to lavenders. There's blue, purple, green. So there's an abundance of different colors that I'm using but the base color is primarily purple. And what I'm going to do is put this layer in between my cut squares. So on this one, I have my flannel back, my flannel middle. Now this is in place of batting. I'm not going to be using any batting for this. And then I put a layer of purple before I add my top layer. So this quilt is going to have four layers. Now this is a very lightweight flannel. I think they call it like a flannelette. And then this is going to be two pieces of cotton. So it's not going to be terribly heavy, but all those layers will make it nice and warm, which I think is just perfect for what I need. So you can see as these are stacked, these bits of purple are showing through at the edges. So when this is all sewn together and clipped and washed and that frayed edge is exposed, we're going to have some purple purple colors in between the uh, in between the blocks and I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So what I want to show you first is how to set that up. So let me get these first set of squares cut so you can see how I'm doing this. Where there's a floral on the front, there'll be a floral on the back, and then the pink middle. And so I start with my bottom layer first, and the right side goes to the outside. Remember, when you're doing a rag quilt, the um, right side is always to the outside. 
then I'm going to put down my middle layer. Now I'm also going to put this with the right side down. My experience with rag quilts, and I've made quite a few, I find that when they fray, it's the bottom side of the fabric which tends to be more visible because as this is clipped and it's sewn, it lifts up. So we see this outer edge more than this. And I'd rather have the pink exposed than just this white interior. So that's my thought process there. And now before I put the top layer on, I'm going to put in two 10 inch squares. And these have been cut to 10 by 10. And I just wanna put this right here. Oh, I've got to cut those selvages off. Almost forgot. Yes, definitely. Rag quilting, always cut those selvages because you will not get the fraying with uh, the selvages still intact. Even if you just leave like a little eighth of an inch, you're not going to be happy because it won't fray. This edge is woven much more tightly and it's it just won't fray. It gets uh, really tightly wound together and uh, it stays that way. So what I do, now my camera stand kind of limits my my space as far as the visibility of what I can show you. I can't do the whole width, but I think I can do two squares together. So I put my first purple block in and I'm going to line up the edge right where I'm going to cut. And if there's extra, it can hang out over here and that's fine. Now, I'm also going to, oops, that one's got a wrinkle. These I do make sure they're pressed because if those middle pieces are not pressed well, um, it can get, get kind of messy. You don't want any wrinkles in there. Okay, now this one is right on the 10 inch and they line up well. So when I cut my 10 inch, I'm going to be right between those two pieces. Now all these fabrics came from fat quarters. So I didn't have width of fabric in order to cut these in long lengths. That's why I'm going to um, this effort in order to do that. Now I could have bought some purple, but I had an abundance of it. And I had these fat quarters, and you can tell some of these are a little funky. I don't know just what I would do with them. Great for scrap quilts, great for rag quilts. So here's here's a good way to uh, utilize, not use up or get rid of, but to utilize an unfavorite fabric. and uh, Or color, or print, or, you know, something left over that you did for someone special and it's not your your style, well, put it in the middle of a rag quilt. It'll save you the cost of a middle layer and it's going to just make your quilt that look that much better. So now I have my wrong side, or excuse me, I have the back side facing outward and I have my middle layer. I have my color layer Now let me show you what we have here. I have the back facing outward. I have the middle facing also to the back outward. And would you look at that. What is it I say all the time? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Measure twice and cut once. Well, I kind of blew that, didn't I? Well, luckily I have extra blocks. So I am now going to cut this one at 10 inches. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Um, yes, I do generally always cut some extras just because you never know. And we'll use this. If you've ever, um, if you've seen my class that I do um, rag quilt borders, the ruffled borders, these are perfect. So I don't throw anything like that away. Okay, so here's one. Let's see how we fix the next one. What happened here? Same thing. Look at that. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's bring this one in. All right, well now you know how not to do this. Now this one I did cut at 10 inches, but the fabric was already off. 
Um, I was looking for the top, and there it is right there. OK, so that one's OK. And did I cut my third one? Nope, but it's short. Now, what I can do, too, is I can piece a couple different um, pieces of fabric if I had to. Um, but I should have plenty. So let me go ahead and grab one of these. And we'll just cut this right on the 10 inch mark. So there's one. I don't remember, did I put the other one here? Nope. Okay, so there's three. And then we'll put number four in. It's a little bit left over from the other. Just trimming off the edge. Let me bring this over so we can see it. I want to be able to see the whole block as I'm cutting it. So let me go ahead and set that right here. We'll line this up and I'm going to set it right to 10 inches. And let's see how it goes. That looks good. All right, now this is the way it should look. So we have our backing, we have our middle, we have our accent fabric, and we have our front. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the or uh, finish cutting them and then do the X from side to side. Well, I'm glad I got to show you how to fix that. What a crazy thing. Now I'm cutting the second set of blocks. They're going to be alternating. One's going to be the uh, pink floral I just did, and the other will be the uh, dragonflies. So I have the pink check. Now I ran out of my light pink center layer, so I'm just substituting this in. This is going to work out fine. Um, it's in the relative kind of same colorway, and with the purples in there, um, it's it's going to work out, and I'm not worried about that. And again, you know, this is a rag quilt. Um, while I bought a number of the fabrics I wanted to use, I'm also using up a lot of scraps for this project. So I'm putting my three layers together with the selvages aligned. I'm going to remove the selvages. Now, what I'm doing here, instead of cutting my 10 inch blocks, I need to cut some five and a half inch strips. And the reason for that is I am offsetting my rows with narrow blocks. And that's going to um, create an opportunity to not have matching seams. And for me, that's just a great and wonderful thing. So what I'm going to do is line these up just like I did on the big ones. And I'm going to go just like this and this. Yep. So I'm on, on I'm cutting these at five and a half. So I can't just cut them at five, which is half of the 10 inch block, because then I'm going to not have enough for seam allowance. So you always have to uh, add seam allowance when you um, change the size of your block. So this is 10 inches and I'm going to cut it by five and a half. And I need one of these half squares, one, two, three, four, five and a half, for every row. So depending on how many rows you, you're using, you'll need one of these for each one. I'll just take that out. So uh, what I'm going to do is just like I'm I'm going to show you with the large squares is we're going to go crisscross from here to there. We've got our four layers. It's going to hold it together. And once that's done, we're going to be ready to put this quilt together. It does go quickly. It's a lot of cutting in the beginning, but once you start sewing, then you've got a quilt and you're going to be really excited about this. So let me show you how all this works. My blocks are all cut and I have them layered. I have my backing. I have my center layer of flannel, which is in place of the batting. I have my purple fabric, which I'm using as an accent, and then my top fabric. So that both front and back face outwards because that's going to be the finished side of the quilt. Now, I'm going to sew this in an X cross to cross, the idea being that it's going to hold everything together. If you're using batting, you absolutely need to do this, otherwise the batting won't stay where it needs to be. Because I'm using multiple layers of fabric and they are all the full length or the width of the fabric, 
then as I sew my seams, it's going to hold it in place. So if I were just making, you know, a baby quilt or something, I wouldn't worry so much about doing the crisscross quilting on just fabrics, just layers of fabric without batting, because it's not going to, um, you know, endure a lot of wear and tear that, you know, may become problematic. The reason I'm doing it is because there are four layers. It'll give it a bit of that quilted look. We'll get some dimension um, by sewing because you don't get that without the batting. So that's going to sort of create the mock look of a rag quilt. And more importantly, it's just going to hold everything together and make this quilt that much sturdier. Like I said, this is for my granddaughter. It's going to be her camping quilt. So it'll take a lot of wear and tear. Additionally, I have my walking foot in place and I have a size 16 needle. Both are very important when you're doing your rag quilting. When you have multiple layers of fabric, you need that, that walking foot to keep the fabric layers together. And then when you get to the other side, everything will mostly line up. Now, for something like this, I'm going to go corner to corner. If you're more comfortable, you can draw a line, but what I'll often do is just take my, there we go, take my corner and fold it up. And you can see, you know, not everything lines up perfectly, and I'm okay with that. It's a rag quilt. It's They were cut individually. Not all of these were cut at the same time, so they are going to be, you know, some discrepancies. But we're going to clip all this, and it's going to fray out, so it's okay. As long as you have enough for your seam allowance, that's what's critical. Now, the reason I fold this up is this helps me find my other corner. Rather than go through and draw lines, just fold your fabric up so it's pretty much in the middle, and then you follow the corner, and it's going to take you to the other side. And if you just follow all the way through, keeping this, you know, nice and, and uh, square so it's relatively even on each side, and then just fold this open, and you can see you're on the corner, and when you get there, you're all set. All right, so I'm just going to do a few of these. I want to show you, um, you know, just how this works. The other thing um, that I do is chain, oh, did you see that, is I chain stitch. Now, sometimes when you chain stitch, you have to be careful because these corners may want to roll over on you. Now, on this one, I noticed just as I started sewing, this was turning over, but then it let loose and it went back, which is great. But on the next one, I'm going to show you a trick that I use that keeps the, um, the corners from turning over like that. So this is just a very quick method to aim yourself across your block and just go on through all the way to the other end. Now, one thing I want to show you here is if you have a problem with your fabrics flipping over, let's see, where's a good one? Like this. Okay, these corners are all pretty much in the same place. Now, if I start right here on that corner, right at that point, there's a good chance this is going to lift up. Now, if I start sort of just off the corner one way or the other, and in this case, I would go to this side versus this side. Because this is more outer edge, this is going to catch them both. Um, just because there's a little separation. But coming right in that little nook right there allows me to swing in and get my corner sewn without it flipping over. And then if you had to come in at an angle, then all you need to do once you, um, you know, stitch maybe a half inch or so, is go ahead and um, straighten out your seam as you're sewing. This is not a seam that's going to need that's going to match anywhere or anything. It's just basically not much more than basting. It's it's sort of the quilting of this particular block and it holds everything together so that as we sew the seams it's all in one piece. Okay. So now, I did the chain stitching, so I'm going to come through and clip these. And you want to keep these threads short. You don't want 
um, a lot of threads hanging. In other words, you you know clip them and trim them as you go because you don't want those threads hanging loose in your uh, in your rag quilt because when you go to do the uh, the fraying, they just don't fray well. Now, another thing to watch for is as you're sewing, if something feels thicker or, or something of that nature, it's not uncommon for one of these pieces to fold under while you're sewing. You've probably had that happen when you're um, working on your quilt sandwich. So just, you know, keep that in mind. And generally you're going to feel that because your hands are becoming accustomed to what the the uh, thickness should be and when you feel something that just doesn't quite seem right then take a look and find out what's going on so let me go ahead and we'll get through this one I not, don't want to sew that thread in all right and then we have one more and then what I want to do is show you how we do the half blocks. It's a very similar process. There we go. And just go right through. So once all those, whoop, there's a little piece, a little extra piece along the way. Once those are through, you want to do the same thing with the half blocks. And you need one of these for each of your uh, rows. So however many rows you have, you'll need to um, create one of these. And again, it's just, you know, aiming yourself from one corner to the other. And what I do is I just hold this corner with my thumb and finger. And I hold it more or less in line with the presser foot. And I just sort of aim to my finger. And as long as you, you know, hit it relatively uh, straight on, you should be okay. It looks like these are kind of moving around on me. All right, so we're going to do the same here. And again, chain stitching is a great time saver. Not to mention it saves on a lot of thread. Um, you know, I I find when I quilt, I sometimes end up with way too much thread on the back, um, and I'm always, whoops, I'm always um, trimming off those threads, you know, before I do the quilting because I don't like threads showing through the front of the back. Okay, so let me do one of each of these to show you the second step. Oh, I already did this one. Okay, so we did rounds one and two here. And let's go ahead and do the second stitching here. I'm going to move that. All right, so again, we just go corner to corner. And that's the extent of it. There's nothing, you know, difficult, complicated, complex at all. It's just sewing it in place. And even if it's not perfect, it's okay. I kind of uh, go <laughs> with the name Rag Quilt. You know, that, that doesn't mean it's going to be the uh, Baltimore, what's it called? The Baltimore Applique Quilt, those big, huge, wonderful, gorgeous quilts that somebody hand stitch all those little pieces onto. That's not where we're heading with this. We are making a utility quilt that's going to be soft and comfy and pretty to look at, and it's going to endure uh, years, many years actually, of, of use and, and lots of love, I'm sure. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is put our quilt together. So let me show you how that process will work. I'm going to begin sewing my blocks together into rows. And what I generally do, particularly on rag quilts, because they can get a, a bit heavy and bulky, is I'll sew two rows individually and then sew them together. At that point, I'll take a break and do a lot of the clipping on the interior part and just save the outer edges for the end. That way I'm not spending one continuous hour or more on just the clipping. Um, I prefer to spread it out a little bit. So I'm going to put these together. This is what the pattern basically is for my quilt, is just two alternating blocks and they alternate on the back as well. So I'm going to start, this is my my first block and my second in the first row, and I'm going to put them with the backs together. 
because remember we want the seam to be on the front so it's exposed. So you want to line everything up. Now I take, generally on rag quilts, I'll take about a half of an inch uh, seam allowance, but because of the extra fabric um, I'm going to go with about a 5 8 so I'm going to go just a little bit more than a regular half inch seam. So I'm going to line up my blocks and you can pin them in the middle if that helps just to hold it together. Um, the walking foot is a big asset. It really does a lot of work for you though I still keep my hand to the back just to make sure everything is in line. I hold these fabrics together um, just so nothing shifts or moves because even with the walking foot I have a lot of fabric here and these pieces can move around. Now fortunately a lot of this is flannel and flannel tends to kind of stick to itself. It's not a slippery sliding fabric which works out great. So there is row number one. Now row number two, if I put this same block in line, I'm going to have matching seams. I do not want to have matching seams. So what I'm going to do is put my half block here and then I will go ahead and add this block here. So I'm going to get my diagonal this way and so let me go ahead and line up my half block and I'm going to put it right here and I'm just going to chain stitch again right over and onto that block and I'm going to keep my 5 8 inch seam allowance because I do want to be consistent throughout the quilt. Now if you do end up with you know sections that are longer than the other because your, your seam allowance was off, you don't really have to worry about that. You can trim off the edges. Um, that works out pretty well. So now you can see the beginning of the pattern developing. So this will ultimately be all the way over here, but for chain stitching purposes, this just works better to let it line up this way. So now I'm going to put my next block. So if you're just using two different fabrics, this is very easy to do in order, whoops, excuse me, in order to, um, you know, get your placement right. When you're using multiples, like you're doing three or four colors in a row, um, and you want them all to, you know, follow in consecutive rows like stripes, you have to pay a little bit more attention. And uh, then there's the totally random option, which is great. That's probably the easiest way to do it. So let me go ahead and get all this lined up and work that through. Now because of the way some of these blocks were cut, now a lot of them were all cut in stacks and you'll see when I get to those that they all line up beautifully because they're all the same size. But I went ahead and added these extra purple fabrics in and that's um, all obviously I wasn't accurate with 10 inch but I was pretty darn close and so some of these seams may not be exactly square or the corners I should say may not be exactly square but as long as I line them up again this is all going to be frayed out at the end so those are things that are not going to be seen um, you know once the quilt is finished because once we get all that clipping done and we put this through the wash then it's all going to be fuzzy and beautiful in here. I can't wait to show you. So let me get to the end of the row and show you how the other side works. I'm ready to add the last block on to the end, the other end of the rows one and two. Now, if you remember when we started, we started with a full block in row one and a half block in row two. And now we are going to do just the opposite. And we're doing that in order to create an equally sized quilt because we want it to be square. We want all the rows to be the same size. And this is also 
Let me just move the camera a little bit. There you can see better. Um, this is also going to um, get our offset seams. So this works great. I love doing offset seams. I I swear by them and I, I use them any time that I can in all my quilting, not just rag quilting, because it's a time saver and I think it just creates an extra bit of a of, of interest in the pattern. Okay, so this one now is going to have a full size block. Because if you remember, row two started with a half block. So let me go ahead and do this. And I'll show you how it's going to finish up. Actually, what we can do is I'll just sew this row together so you can see how it's going to work. All right, I'll just get these threads out of the way. I'd rather do it now than deal with a lot of them later. So I have my half block and I have my full size block at the end. It's just they're in reverse order. So now what I'm going to do is go all the way back to the beginning simply because it's easier for me and lay this out. Now as we chain stitched you'll notice our our blocks are not going to match up at this end so we do need to um, clip our chain stitching as we go. You can do it all at once or you know do it a few at a time I always do a few at a time because if I get interrupted, you know, I don't want to be worried about, oh gosh, where was I? So I'm going to put this right here and I'm going to pin this um, to this spot. Now, I will pin this first seam open on the top. The rest of them, I'll, I'll see them coming so I can do it by hand. But the other thing that I do is I go through on the back side and I pin these and I pin this side because I'm going to be sewing in this direction. The needle and the presser foot comes this way. I want to make sure that side of the seam stays in the down position so it's right there. I don't want it to flip this way and that way my seams will be open because if you sew this with, um, let me make sure, there we go. If you sew this with your seams all to one side, that is a lot of thread in just one place. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll put another pin here. Get it all the way through and then let's get started. To begin sewing these two together, we want to make sure these corners line up nicely and line up your seam allowance. And I find with all this, I don't have a problem with having to pin the rows together because with this crisscrossing, all these fabrics are pretty much stabilized and staying together. You're not going to get a lot of stretch. And because these seams are offset, um, it's all very forgiving. So you can deal with it as you're comfortable with, but this, this works fine for me. So I'm coming to my first seam and I'm going to make sure that's open. I'll sew across it. Now I know there's another seam coming up. So remember these seams are going to be about every, what is it, four and a half inches or so. And so you want to make sure that you're on top of that. There we go. And we'll do this next one. I can put that pin away. I'll come right out to here. And just keep lining up your fabric as you go along. Um, you know, there's a lot here and it may tend to shift. And that's part of the reason why I just do two rows, because once it gets heavy and if it's hanging over this edge, that can be tough to manage. All right, so I'm going to line this up. I have another pin for the bottom layer down here. All right, make sure it's laying flat. And I'm going to 
come down to this one and pin that one open. Like I said, I'm not worried so much about the top layer because I can see that, but I can't always see the back layer. And again, with the, the fabric, as much fabric as there is, you can't always feel um, for that extra, extra layer. You can see not all my edges are perfectly even. Um, as I said, when you have multiple layers of fabric like this, you know, they, they're going to be cut different sizes and you put them together as, as best you can. All right, so I'll come down to this next one. Hold that one open. And then we just continue sewing and sew right through the seam. And I'm just going to finish this all the way to the end of the row. And then I'll show you what's happening from there. With my first two rows attached, I do want to show you how to clip your seams. Um, like I said, I do this in stages and that way I'm not doing all of the same thing repetitively over a long period. I like to break it up and spread it out. Now, I want to ask, who noticed on that last segment that I was sewing this seam there was no bobbin thread? I got down to where I turned off the camera. I went to adjust my fabric. Nothing. So I had to go back and redo that. I just, I didn't know if somebody saw that. Generally, you know, somebody out there picks up those kind of snafus. But now we're going to clip. It's sewn together. I've double checked. I've made sure there's bobbin thread, so I'm good to go. I want to show you my clippers. This is what I use for rag quilting. And this is by Janome, and I love their clippers. They're spring-loaded, and that's the secret. When you use scissors and you're cutting along, this, th this thumb works really hard. Now, when you have a spring-loaded pair of snippers or clippers, whatever you want to call them, I do it this way so the little clasp hangs down, um, you close it and it just automatically pops open. This spring holds everything um, in a nice position so it's more comfortable in your hand. And after you've cinched it closed, it helps push it out so your hand isn't doing that double motion. Now, when I'm doing my, my uh, snipping, my clipping in between, the first thing I do is I'll come into my seam and on the quilt side, not the seam side, the quilt side, I cut horizontally. I snip in. Now these are maybe a little bit closer than they should be. You you want to leave a good eighth, if not, you know, almost a quarter of an inch. But again, because I have so much fabric, there's a, a less chance that any of this is going to come apart because there's just so much there to hold it. Now that I've done this, I can hold these two together and just clip down the whole seam. And so I'll just start here and I go, you know, anywhere from a quarter to a half inch. I, I probably average at about three eighths. Um, the raveling will be better, I think, the closer you go, because if those threads are shorter, they're going to be pulled out from the uh, the fabric much easier. And that's essentially what we're doing. This fabric is woven in, you know, horizontal and vertically. So by cutting the threads that go from this edge to this edge, all we have left here, let me just close these because I don't want to tag myself with them. So when we, we cut this like this, let's do it on this side. I don't know if you can see it up close. Let me do it right here. Okay, so get that purple out of there. So you can see how these threads are coming out. And so what's going to wash out are these short threads between the clips. And that's what's going to give us our ragged edge. So the easier we make it to wash out, the better um, fraying you're going to get. And that's where you get those nice big fluffy seams in between your uh, blocks. Now I go to maybe an inch because I want to allow enough that I can maneuver this open when I'm doing that seam. And then when I come back and I do that seam across the entire row, um, I can just pick up those edges. 
So what I'm going to do here, let me just raise my presser foot, is I'll, I'll clip this, this way and this way. And then I'll be ready, whoops, I didn't get the bottom layer. And then I'll be ready to clip that whole area. Now the other thing that I'm going to do here is do the long seam that joins the rows. So these are the seams that are joining the blocks, and now I'm doing the seam that joins the rows. The first thing that I do is I get up right next to that seam and I clip it here and I clip it here. Where that's sewn, it's not going to fray. So you wanna clip up close because it's still going to hold things together, but we want to cut as close as we can so we're going to get fraying on the outside. So I'll cut once in the middle of the seam allowance and then come to the outside edge. Now once I do that, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll do each seam that way. And see, I already did this one. And then I will just go through and do the long stretches. You know, and I change it up. It, it gets boring, but uh, it, it works well. And you know, if you've got a movie going or you know, sitting there listening to whatever or watching or sitting outside enjoying whatever you may have out there. Um, just, just you know, snip along and, whoops, I don't want to lose it here. Just get yourself ready and then once this row is done, you can set it aside, or this pair of rows, you can set it aside and you'll be ready to put your quilt together. Now, I do the same thing on the other side. Remember, these seams are offset, so I have to do it over here as well. And so I'm going to come in sideways. I guess it'll be easier this way, like that. And then I'll come in this way, and I'll get it right up close, catch the middle, catch the edge. And I don't go particularly close here because these are the diagonal um, seam lines where we sewed everything together. And by snipping those lines, you're going to get better raveling right in there. And let's see, so where did I leave off? Oh, I guess I left off over here. So now that I have this part clipped, I can come back and finish clipping from where I left off and just, you know, tuck them along the way. And that's it. So we just need to do this on every seam, which is why I, I stage myself and do a few at a time. If you haven't used these before, um, I would certainly recommend them. They are a time saver. They are so much easier on your hands and they're, they're incredibly sharp. So you do have to be very, very careful. Um, you can use scissors, and there was a time where I, I didn't really even know about these, and I would put, you know, like a latex or a rubber glove on and put a piece of tape around my thumb just so I wouldn't get blisters. Um, so, you know, it can be a little little rough the first time or two if you've not done it and if you don't have all the tools that may make it the easiest. So you pick and choose what works best, but of the two things, definitely a walking foot and some kind of a spring-loaded snipper. These run about $30. You can get them cheaper from maybe 10 to 12, even $15. Um, I don't know how long they'll last. I don't know how sharp the blade is. And a lot of them are like plasticky. This is metal. I mean, this this baby um, is, is built to last. And I really appreciate that. Not unlike the Ginger scissors, you know, when you get a really good pair of scissors in your hand, you know it because you can feel it. They, they fit well and they handle well um, as you're maneuvering. Okay, so that's that. Um, I do have a link below. Yes, I get a commission if you buy them. It doesn't affect your price. They're not paying me to promote them. I really like them that much. So now what I'm going to do is get the other uh, pairs of my quilts together, do some pre-snipping, get some clips done, and uh, then we're going to put the quilt together, and I'll show you what this will look like. We're doing really well, coming along great. The last rows have been added to the quilt, so I now have my full six and a half blocks wide by nine long. So this is a long quilt. It's going to finish out at about 60-ish by 80-ish, um, give or take a, 
a seam or two here and there. But I just wanted to show you, I have this last section, the last few rows that I connected to the quilt. And so when I make my pairs of rows, as I said, I do those first and then I piece the whole quilt together just because it's just too bulky to work with in one big piece. I prefer doing the clipping as I go on the smaller pieces. So that means as I clip these, I leave this last inch to inch and a half unclipped so that when I add the row, I can just come in and snip these up real quick so they're finished and then do the row across. So as you see, we do the horizontal just like we did before. So let's get that horizontal and get some clips in there. And of course I have to do it on both sides because the back as well has those seams. So just, you know, make sure you've got everything. And I'll tell you, if you miss anything, you will definitely see it after you wash it. And you can just go in and clip it um, after the fact. And then the next time it gets washed, um, it'll, it'll do its fray. And if it's just a couple spots, you probably don't need to worry about it right away as far as washing it. Get it clipped and then the next wash will take care of it. Okay, so we know how to do the rows to uh, where we've connected, but now let's do that seam. And if you remember on the seam, we snip on each side and then clip in there. I, I probably do these a little closer than the rest because there's double the layers and I want to make sure that that frays out well. And we come to the outside edge right here. Go this way, whoops. And I'm going to come this way. And then what I'll do is I'll just hold these. Whoops, that piece didn't get clipped right there. And so here I will just clip it along. But I have to remember now I have this one so I want to make sure I get this clipped. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go through the entire row and do all the seams first. That way as I'm clipping I just kind of have to you know clip in between. So at this point I would just have to clip from here to here because these two seams have both been done just like this one. So let me just go ahead and clip this out here. Just like that. And then and then that's it. Get the clipping done. Um, we want to do a corner. And where is my corner? Once all the interior clipping of the quilt is finished, we're going to take care of the outer edge. And the first step is to do a double stitch line around that outer edge. The first line holds it together for the rag quilting. The second line is durability. So I, I sew it twice. And that's optional, but... Uh, for me, that works out well. So the first thing we're going to do is clip the corners. Just take this little tiny bit off. It doesn't doesn't need a lot, but just enough to bring that back a little bit from the corner. This will eliminate all that excessive knotting that you sometimes get in the corners because as this fabric is is fraying, if you have long threads, they may get caught together. And so let's see, I have my my corner here, you can see that where it's cut, and I'm going to take a little snip inside and then one on each side and do the same over here. And then once the corner's finished, I'm just going to go all the way across the edge of my quilt around the entire perimeter and also come in on these outer edges as well. Now you may have already done these when you did the interior of the quilt, but I prefer not to do these, clip them anyways, until I sew because once I sew this, I'm going to sew all the seams open around the outer edge and then that just makes it a bit easier to clip. I just come in and, and you clip the same way no matter where you are. Just always clip into the seam and uh, that'll work for you. So clipping is finished. I'll go ahead and get this washed. Um, the big thing to remember when you're washing is that you want to 
make sure there's enough in the washer. If you only have a rag quilt and it's on the smaller side and it gets stuck on one side, you'll get an uneven load and your washing machine won't like that. So there are times if I have a small to medium quilt, I'll just put an extra towel or two in there. Get an old beach towel or whatever you, you want and uh, just throw it in there and do the wash cycle. Make sure there's a second rinse on there and that's going to get rid of a lot of the threads. At that point, I'll take my quilt out. I'll shake it outside. Um, if you're doing a denim or something, at this point, you'll probably start seeing some some threads raveling, some long pieces wanting to knot. Denim just does that. It's tough unless you really are um, doing a lot of clipping. You can sometimes get a lot of those strings on denim. But if that's the case, just, you know, cut them off. If you have a knot right here, just pull that knot out and cut the threads even with your seam, and that's going to take care of it. Then once everything is washed and well rinsed and you've shaken it out and you've got off as much as you can you're going to put it in the dryer again with a towel because the towel is going to help move it around and and give it something to sort of bump against you know you need that that uh, tumbling motion to keep the the quilt moving so that those threads are coming out and the more agitation and tumbling it gets, the more threads it'll come out. And then give it another good shake. If you find that you have um, a number of threads remaining, give it another rinse cycle. They, there will be some threads that'll stick, but over the course of a few washings, not only does the quilt get nice and puffy, but you'll, you'll lose those, those threads. They will eventually come off. Lint rollers work well. Um, it just depends on the fabric you use and, and, and how it, how sticky, I don't want to say sticky, but how much nap these, these pieces have, because if, there's a, a heavy nap, then that can um, hold on to those little fibers more than something like the flannelettes that are much thinner. All right. Well, I can't think of anything else. Do we have all those questions answered? Make sure you leave me a comment and ask if there's something that I've overlooked and not explained well enough. I'm going to get this in the wash and dry it, and then I'm going to show you what this finished quilt looks like. I love it. Oh, my goodness. It is just adorable, and these colors are precious. Fun, fun. Okay, I'll be back in a few. And here's the finished quilt. It's six and a half blocks by nine rows, and it measures approximately 60 by 80 inches. It's probably one or two inches more in each direction. Plus, I did put the uh, the border on this, which I really like. This is where I started. So this is the first pair of rows that I demonstrated. I did six across, add the half. Then I start with a half and sew six across, and I make that pair. Then I repeat that. So here's two, here's two. And um, the ninth one, obviously, is an odd, so I just added that at the end. But I just kept this pattern in the alternating to, um, you know, keep that stair step look. I really like how it turned out. You see these lighter ones. These have a lighter purple in the, uh, in the, what do I want to say, in the mix instead of being really dark. And it turns out that it ended up being a lot of the half blocks. But, um, I really like it. And I love how these, these purple, um, Oh, goodness, what I want to say, these these purple frayed edges just really frame a lot of the blocks. It, it adds a little more dimension, it's a lot of interest, and it's really fun to look at up close. I think I showed you that picture um, earlier in the video where you can see up close just how it looks. But I have a granddaughter who is going to be so happy to receive this quilt. I hope you enjoyed watching and that you got some ideas about how to make a rag quilt and maybe take on a different uh, a different approach and think about it just a little bit differently in terms of how you can use up some of the fabrics you already have and create a beautiful rag quilt. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. It was my pleasure to be here. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful week and find some time for quilting.